Hi, my name is Dave and I've developed the hover mower, I call it. It's a real mower that you can build yourself. It's a DIY developmental project. And I've got all the parts and instructions on Thingiverse. I'm also going to launch a, uh, a GitHub page. I forget the actual name of it. We'll have to edit that in later. But I'm going to make all everything open source. The idea is that you can take this design and make it yourself. You can't print it and make money off of it. Um, so you can build it yourself out of a kit. You assume all the liability for it because it is developmental. Uh, it shouldn't cost you that much to make. And over time, it's a lot of fun. We learn a lot along the way. And if you use it long enough, you can even save some money. So what I've got here is a Fiskars reel mower. It's no contact. So that means that as we turn this reel, the blades don't cut the other, don't touch the other side. The way this works is a rotary mower usually spins around a blade and it rips the grass. No matter how much you sharpen them, that's what it does. I've made those remote control too, but I like this one because it snips the grass. So it has a shearing action and without everything turned on, you can actually push this. It's very, very quiet. It, it's very quiet. It's about as quiet as flipping the pages in a book. So I've got the mower, which you can get used. I got this one for 30 bucks because someone got tired of pushing it. I've got a hoverboard. Those are ubiquitous. You can get them almost anywhere. These are the brushless DC motors. They're very high torque. They also have good accuracy. I've got just a little bit of clearance. I've got parts on Thingiverse for you so you can 3D print these gears and these gears here. This gear drives that wheel. So there's a little bit of disassembly of the mower to get it done. I'm sure you can handle it. Now if we come in closer, a really nice thing about the hoverboard is that it comes with a very expensive battery. This is a four amp hour lithium ion battery and it has a battery management system so you're less likely to burn your house down. The old ones did not have that. This is 3D printed out of a material called PETG. I believe you could also print it out of PLA. Um, and these gears, what I did to make these last a little longer is I sprayed them with a little bit of Teflon spray. You could use almost anything. Even if you're, if you're that uh, persuasion, you could use olive oil. There's only a little bit of play there. Um, and there's also a protective ring so these don't get banged up when you run over stuff. I've got some bearings in here too. These are really inexpensive bearings. And there's a spacer in here. It's kind of hard to see, but you'll see it when you get involved in the project. So what you do is you buy yourself a hoverboard. You get one of these mowers, either new or used. You get a controller. Oh, and there's one more component too, if you'll come around. Two, two more big ones. This is called an O-Drive. It's an open source motor controller. You could take the drive out of the hoverboards and hack the firmware. I find that to be more of an advanced project. You could use an ESC or electronic speed controller. Um, there's one that's very good called VESC. The 6.6 .6 is a lot safer. I chose the O-Drive because this is going to allow you a lot more flexibility. I really want to partner with some people and open it up with the community. I'd like to see this mower ultimately have a solar array on it so it self-charges and resumes mowing operation. I'd like to see a ground-based GPS reference point so you can get the satellites up there. You know approximately where you are within 10 meters. You get the satellite on the ground and you, you figure out the two. There's a lot of open source stuff there and you could have this mower be autonomous. That would be pretty cool, right? Solar charged, autonomous. So this battery will mow in this condition with grass this tall uh, for about 45 minutes or more. That's been my testing when my kids run. Um, and, and it costs less than a dime to charge it. So it's, it's pretty good. Um, it's nice and quiet, it's a lot of fun. I've also hooked up a um, FPV module up here for like 13 bucks, you can get the whole whole array with the camera and everything and you can power it right off here and you can get the goggles for about 50 bucks for cheap ones so you can actually be a super nerd and just mow with goggles on great for social distancing and it's like SPF 1 million for sunburn so enough jib jab let me turn on the mower just be careful when you turn it on anything could go wrong it's a DIY project so stay behind the blades and don't put your hands in the Live. I'm going to turn on the controller and here we go. We can mow the grass. You can also turn it around. Now, if my grass had fewer sticks in it, this would be even quieter. And my grass also 
we drive on it. So it's got some divots. But as you can see, it's, it's a nice uh, efficient little cut. And if we get in a little bit closer here and look at the grass, we can see that it doesn't rip the grass. It cuts it really clean. It looks like it was cut with scissors. Um, taller weeds, you have to go over them a couple times, but this mower is a lot of fun. I wouldn't make the claim that it's safe, but it's certainly safer than a rotary mower. Um, I've got those RC2, I might release that design as well. But uh, when this mower hits a stick about this big, it'll usually stop. Not always the case, I wouldn't suggest putting your hand in there, but um, you, you really wouldn't want to get your hand in a rotary mower. So this is relatively safe. And it stops. So right now, our motor controller's on, it's locked in position. So these brushless DC motors have Hall effect sensors, they know where they are, and it's very hard to push this, and it actually upsets it when you do push it. But if you want to uh, have a manual override, you can just unplug it, and then you've got yourself a mower. Oh, and one more upgrade. Uh, these wheels here, the original wheels had a square profile, and since this depends on those skidding in order to steer, actually zero turning this is kind of hard on the lawn. Um, if you do a more gradual turn, it, it steers a lot better. But you can see the relationship between these four points of contact with the ground. These ones need to slide in order for it to steer. So I 3D printed these, they have a little bit of a bevel to them, and you can adjust your mowing height just like a factory wheel. All right, so check it out online. Um, you can take the plans, develop them a little bit more, make sure you properly um, give attribution to that original, which is this one. And I can't wait to see what everybody comes up with.